Well, I got involved back in 1983 when I was working with, <laughs> with uh, Montoya uh, on a Luis Valdez play in San Francisco. We were in the same production. And um, um, so we became friends um, and uh, stayed friends up through his uh, culture class years. and. So uh, I've watched him become a really great playwright, and Water and Power became a play. Um, so when it was time for him to do this film, he called me and asked me to play the watch commander. And I, hadn't, I didn't have a chance to see the play, so when I read the screenplay, I was just blown away by it, how, what a great, great screenplay it was. And, um, so I uh, agreed naturally to do, the, to do the part for the movie. Richard was great because he knows the, the material from uh, writing it and then doing a stage production of it and then translating it onto the film. So he was in total command of, of the material and what he wanted from the actors. So that's, that's really what you want from a director. Well, I've played a lot of cops. So consequently, in my career, I've done a lot of research on cops and how they go about doing their business. So um, there wasn't a lot of research that was needed. I had already done that many times years ago, right? So um, the watch commander, um, I think, really became sort of like the, the voice of the voice of reason, strangely enough, um, who was taking care of his, his, his cops, his guys, um, and doing the best to, to save them. Um, and um, so, so he became a kind of, um, oh, you know, for lack of a better way to look at it um, became a, a kind of father figure in that he loves his the guys under his command um, power being power being one of them and um, so it was just well written scenes uh, in, in a well written screenplay so it was, it was not uh, difficult decision for me to do at all. So it's, it, to me it's a simple thing of a talented writer, talented director having a screenplay, um, let's make it into a movie and let's find the funding for it and you know it, it's, um, it was a small budget. Uh, hopefully um, his next projects won't be as, in, uh, that won't be as cumbersome in his next projects, he'll have all the funding that he needs. Well, it, it, it is an important message because um, it projects and extends the, the idea of, of gangs into the police force. They become a kind of, uh, there's gang rivalry in the police force also. So it becomes a metaphor for um, our, our whole society. Um, our whole society coming apart at the ends, uh, and um, who's going to who's going to do something about it? And um, you go back to the scenes with the father of Water and Power, and what he was teaching his kids was not necessarily something that you, <laughs> you should be teaching your children. So it's not. It, it's not a surprise if they grow up with uh, believing all kinds of axioms and uh, traditions that are, uh, in the end, destructive. Yeah, Lupe and I were friends uh, for many years, and uh, she was always, uh, all of us regarded her as a terrific actor. Well, I, I hope that the audience will look underneath the 
text, uh, the, the obvious, and see that um, there are consequences to the way we bring up our children uh, because it, it stays with them, the good and the bad stays with them into adulthood. And um, are they prepared to make wise choices in their lives? Um, I think you have to keep in mind that those two men, water and power, were at one point young boys that had a father, and the father was very influential. It, it's the um, it's the quality of that influence that's that's really key to to this story, I think. So, I think people. I hope that they will. Um, examine the way that they're raising their children. I mean, I, I have to. I have a three-year-old daughter. And um, I'm very, very concerned about what goes into her mind. Um, especially these days when there's so much, so much crap that, you know, all around. So uh, I, I, I would hope that people will examine the quality of the upbringing of their children.